So what are shared preferences and what are they good for? I know I was pretty confused about them when I first started making applications. I kind of thought that they were going to be for like a database substitute where you could save data and uh, like a ton of data, but that's definitely not what you want to do with shared preferences. Shared preferences are good for saving like settings, things like, I don't know, for example, like the brightness level on your phone, maybe the phone volume, uh, whether it's going to be ring or vibrate maybe saving login information so a user doesn't have to type out their information the next time they start the app, things like that. You wanna stay away from anything that you would put in a relational database, like an SQL database. It's pretty much just good for saving either flags or small amounts of data. So in this demo here, um, what I created is just a small application. It's not gonna log in or anything, but what will happen is I can type a username and a password and I can choose to remember my login information or not remember my login information. If I don't click on login, save my login information, I click login and then I close the app and then I restart the app. You'll see that the name and the password wasn't saved for next time. But this time I will actually click on this little checkbox here. I'll click login and I'll close the app just like last time and then restart it. And now you see when it starts up again, it actually saves my username and saves my password and this little checkbox is checked. So that's that's like a prime example of what shared preferences is used for. Another good example is say you created an app and you want and you have some kind of a user agreement, but you only want the user agreement to display when they first install the app. That would be another good way to do it. You could show them the user agreement when they first install the app, then set a flag after they click, you know, I accept the terms and conditions, and then they would never get shown that agreement again. Okay, so we'll start by creating that layout that uh, I showed you in the demo. I created ahead of time, obviously, so I'm just gonna paste it in. So we just have a name, a password, a login button, and a checkbox, pretty straightforward. Now up top, we're gonna declare our shared preferences object, something that's called an editor, which is used to save the shared preferences and then our edit text, our button, and our checkbox. So there's everything we need up top. Now we're gonna declare everything in on create. So we have our name, password, login button, checkbox, shared preferences object, and our editor. But I'll actually talk about the shared preferences object here. So there's a couple ways you can create the shared preferences object. One way is the top way, which I showed here, which is my preferred way. Um, both work fine. So the second way is to do uh, get shared preferences, and then this is kind of like your, uh, this would be like your database name. If you're using an SQL database, you would just like call this, you know, my database or my app or whatever. I just chose the package name just because it doesn't really matter. And then this here is the context. So there used to be different options you could put for this, but now I, I believe the only option left is to use mode private. Um, there used to be uh, like, what was it? You could, you could, I can't remember. You could read, you could, it would allow the file to be read from anywhere on the phone, I believe, or something like that. But it's, it wasn't ever actually used because the point of shared preferences is to be, to hold private information. It's not meant to be shared, which is kind of weird because it's called shared preferences. But anyway, this, this is kind of like not, I don't think many people use this method anymore because there's no difference in the mode, I guess. So the easiest way to do it is say preference manager, get default share preferences, and then use the context. Then this editor object down here, this is for, this is what you actually use to store the shared preferences. The shared preferences object is kind of like declaring the database and then the editor is kind of like the tool that you can, that you use to put items into that database. I don't want to confuse you. It's not actually a database. I'm just using it. I'm just comparing it to a database but you'll see what I mean when I actually start storing objects. So if we wanted to store something in shared preferences, the first thing we would do is go, actually we call the editor, editor, and we do put string. You can use these different data types, but I recommend just using strings and then comparing the strings and setting different data types if they're needed. String is just the easiest way. They're basically key value pairs. So you would put, this, this is the position for your key. So I'm just gonna call it key and then this is gonna be what the actual value is that you're storing. So say I'm storing my name. So the key is key and my name is Mitch. Then you would go editor.commit and that's it. Now this key value pair is stored in shared preferences. So I could then go and get that key value pair by doing 
preferences dot get string and here's where I would put the key and then here's where I put the default value so if for some reason there's no key value pair that exists for the key key that sounds confusing then the default value would be uh, I don't know I'll just say default but in this case what would be retrieved what you would do is you go string name equals share preference get string and this would actually get Mitch this would print out Mitch so if I logged it oh I need to create a tag let's go up top here and do log T and create a tag so if I log this I could go like that and it would print to the log the name Mitch so I'll just show you that really quick here so we can see down the log on create and it prints the name Mitch so what if there you tried to pull information from a key that hadn't been set before so I'm just going to call this like some other key and we're trying to pull the information from some other key but as you can see from the code we never set anything we didn't set any key value pair for some other key so we expect it to pull the default value so let's run the app and see what it prints out so there we go because we hadn't set any value for that key we can see on create prints out default which is what we said here this basically just says try and find the key value pair for this key if you can't find anything then just print default so that's kind of in a nutshell how it works so now let's uh, write the app that I showed at the beginning in the demo and what we want to do as soon as the app starts is we want to check if there's any uh, previously sh saved shared preferences so we'll create a method down here and we'll call it check shared preferences so inside this method first of all we want to check all of our key value pairs we'll check for the checkbox the name and the password and I'm going to explain this here in a second too. So if you remember in what I just showed you, I was just referencing a key by just typing in a string. Remember I called it key. But what the best practice for this is actually to store the keys in your strings uh, file. So go into values and go into strings. And this is where we're going to store all of our keys so we can reference them. It just makes it easy. Like if you're building a big application, it's really easy to lose track of the key names. Like say if you have, you know, 20 activities or something and each activity has a thousand lines of code and you have one little shared preferences uh, saved somewhere in it it can become pretty overwhelming so we'll just save them like this we'll go checkbox and name and password and then inside here how we'll save it is we'll reference the package so save the package and we're gonna put that in each one of these and then we're going to go dot checkbox for this one and dot name for this one and dot password and this is going to save our key names basically that we're going to reference so we can go back to main activity you can see now we get the string for the checkbox by doing get string and then doing r dot string dot checkbox which references this right here this checkbox and the same thing with the name and same thing with the password so the default value that I'm getting for the checkbox is false and the default value for the name and the password are going to be empty. I want it to print nothing out if the user hasn't saved anything previously. So now that we got these values that were previously saved, we want to set them to the text fields. And the checkbox is going to be a little different. We just want to check if it's either true or false. If it's true, we want to set the checkbox. If it's false, we want to uncheck the checkbox. So we can just handle that with a simple if statement. If the checkbox equals true, we set it to checked. And then else, we just set it to false. And that's it. And we want to call this method as soon as the application starts. After, you got to make sure that you do it after you declare your shared preferences object or the app will crash. So we can do check shared preferences. That will check our shared preferences. And now we're going to set an on -click listener to the button and if the button's clicked we want to save the information if the user wants us to save the information. So we go button login, set on -click listener, new on -click listener, and now we're going to have two scenarios. If the checkbox is checked we want to save the name and the password in the checkbox. If it's not checked then we don't want to save that stuff. So if the checkbox is checked we're going to save, otherwise we're going to not save. So let's write the code for if it's checked. So to save the checkbox preference, we just do editor, put string, reference our ID for the checkbox, which we saved in the strings, and we set it to true, and then commit. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the name and the password. So here we have the name, we just get string name equals, we get the text from the text field, and then we store that string by referencing our ID for the name, and then pass the name, commit, and then same thing with the password. So now, if the user doesn't want to save the information, we basically just want to save nothing for here, 
nothing for here and we want to say false for this so we can copy all this paste it in here and we just do oops, false and empty string and empty string and we can delete the name and delete password and that should be it let's run it and see if we get any errors all right so let's first of all just try clicking login and having the remember my log information not checked so i'll type my name my password and type login and then close the app and restart and see if it saves my preferences so we can see that it didn't save it okay that's good now let's type my name and my password check the box to let the app know that we want to save those preferences click login now we'll close the app restart and we can see that the app remembered our saved preferences so other things that shared preferences can be good for is maybe passing data between activities but you don't want to use it for too much more than that you don't want you want to avoid using it for large amounts of data or relational data that's it for this video hopefully it was helpful follow me on twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted if you like my content don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching